Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. Today we're going to cover a bit of a controversial topic and that's tyre size for long-term expeditions. And you know, it's been a bit of a funny experience for me. When I just got back from Africa, I spent all of last summer speaking at overland shows all across North America. And I saw vehicles with 35s, 37s and even 40 inch tyres on display. And it really started to feel like my vehicle had the smallest tires of any of the vehicles at those overland shows. And you know, that was a really strange experience for me because in all of my years driving around the world, I have never met a single overlander who runs tires that big. And so to me, this seemed like a really big disconnect. Why do the overland shows have all of these vehicles with massive tires, but real overlanders out there driving around the world don't use massive tires. What's going on here? Why is there such a big difference? And what are the reasons that these international overlanders aren't upgrading to these monster tires? If this is something you've wondered about, and if you're thinking about upgrading to monster tires, then stick around because I've got a lot to talk about. So the tires I'm running on my Jeep, people are surprised to find out, these are only about 33 and a half inches. And I get asked all the time, why haven't I upgraded to 37s and when will I be doing that? And the answer is I'm never going to do it. And we're gonna get into those reasons in a minute. But before we do, let's talk about the three main advantages to upgrading to big tires. So the first main advantage, if I went up to 37s, is I'm adding four inches overall in diameter. That means two on the bottom and two on the top. So without a doubt, I get two inches more of ground clearance, which is certainly a bonus, and it means the Jeep will be more capable the places I wanna go. But to be honest, in all of my experience, I never found anywhere that the Jeep wouldn't go. So actually, I don't know if that capability is necessary. The next main advantage is that 37 inch tires, they're 12 and a half inches wide. So that's two inches wider than the tires I'm running right now. What that means is you get a much bigger contact patch on the ground, especially when you air down. So right there, you're gonna get a lot more traction and that again will make the vehicle more capable. And finally, third reason to upgrade to 37s, there's no doubt about it, they look cool. It's gonna make your vehicle look tougher and bigger and for a lot of people, that is important. Although for how much it costs, is it really important enough? So with those positives out of the way, let's start talking about the reasons that I haven't upgraded to 37 inch tires. And the first reason is really simple. I'm on a tight budget and to be honest, it's expensive to upgrade tires. And a lot of people forget it isn't just the cost of the tires. When I priced it out, they're about $50 a tire more than the ones I'm running right now. So right there for five tires, that's $250. On top of that though, to run those tires, I'm gonna to have to buy new wheels because they're so wide, these wheels don't have the offset I need. Good wheels aren't cheap, maybe $250 each. So right there, that's another $1,250 just to run bigger tires. On top of that, I'm also gonna to need to re-gear my Jeep. I currently have 410 diffs, and to be honest, I wouldn't wanna go any bigger in tires unless I re-geared. So looking around, I don't have the skills to install gears myself. I'd have to pay a shop to do it. I wanna buy quality gears. That's somewhere around $2,000 to have that done. So you can see the prices are adding up here just to go up a couple of inches of ground clearance. Final thing you need to think about is you probably need suspension upgrades to run tires that big. The suspension I'm running now technically would handle 37s. So I'm gonna say I don't have to spend money on that but that's something you need to think about. So right there, simply to get two inches more of ground clearance, I have to spend over $4,000 to make that happen. Just to put that into perspective, $4,000 is more than half of the gas budget it took me to drive to Argentina. So if you're currently thinking about upgrading to big tires, my advice to you, put that money in a savings account instead, and you've already made a big dent in your budget for the Pan American Highway trip. The next reason not to upgrade to 37 inch tires is gas mileage. For all long-term international overlanders, gas is by far their biggest expense. And so when you're modifying your vehicle, 
Anything that reduces your gas mileage needs to be seriously considered and hopefully avoided if possible. So just out of interest, if we run the numbers, my Jeep currently gets about 18 miles a gallon. And if I went up to 37s, it sounds like I'd probably get about 15 miles a gallon. Doesn't sound like a huge hit, but you have to remember when I drove from Alaska to Argentina, I drove 40,000 miles. That starts to add up. So on that trip, gas is about $3.80 to $4 a gallon. That's 40,000 miles at 15 miles a gallon instead of 18 miles a gallon. If we run the numbers, it's gonna cost me nearly $2,000 more in gas to make that trip. So suddenly that trip starts to be less achievable simply because now it's too expensive. I would have had to go to work for more years. I would have had to you know, try to save more money and that just makes it harder. So for me, reducing my gas mileage that much to get just two inches of ground clearance, I don't think it's worthwhile. And on top of that, when you reduce your gas mileage, you're not only gonna spend more money to drive the same distance, you also have to carry more gas to get the same range. So if you wanna get into the remote places like the salt flats of Bolivia, or you wanna drive across the Congo like I did, suddenly now you have to carry more and more gas. That means more weight on your suspension. That means more gas containers to cart around or more expensive external fuel tanks. All of this starts to become a real problem because you have to carry so much gas just to get a decent range. So again, the hit to gas mileage of going up to 37s, it starts not to look like a good idea if you're trying to go on a long expedition. Another big factor to consider for long-term overlanding is the payload of your vehicle and your overall weight. And 37 inch tires aren't light. In fact, for all five of them, that's nearly a hundred pounds of extra weight on the vehicle. That's a hundred pounds of stuff you can't bring with you. So again, going to those bigger tires has some real compromises. As well as that, it's important to remember that four of those tires are unsprung weight. I know this isn't a sports car, I'm not looking for high performance, but unsprung weight does negatively impact drivability and performance, and it is going to be noticeable. So that extra weight is something you wanna think about before you add it to your vehicle. Another reason not to run big tires is simply just wear and tear on the vehicle. Tires of that size are gonna put a lot more stress on components like ball joints, U-joints, and axles, and they're gonna greatly increase the chances of you breaking one of those components. And when you're driving across the salt flats of Bolivia or crossing the Congo, you're thousands of miles from the nearest spare parts, sometimes thousands of miles from a person who speaks English. It's not a time that you wanna be breaking U-joints or anything like that. So for me, I actually like to say, with these tires, the first thing that I break is traction. And you know, that's perfectly fine. When I was in the Congo and traction became a bit of an issue, I stopped what I was doing. I didn't break anything, most important thing. I stopped what I was doing, I got out, I looked for winch points, I thought about the max tracks, I thought about the shovel, and I reevaluated. That's the goal. And you know, maybe it took me an extra 10 minutes to get through a couple of things because I didn't have an enormous amount of grip, but that's actually a good thing because then I didn't break anything. And just a funny antidote on that, a friend in the industry who's very well regarded, he said to me once, yeah, you know why Land Cruisers and Land Rovers never break driveline components? Because they have tiny tires, so they can't get enough grip to ever cause any damage. Something worth thinking about. On top of that, of course, this vehicle was never designed for such big tires and the front axle simply isn't strong enough to deal with 37s. Some people say you'll get away with it, probably for a while, but I did drive 54,000 miles around Africa. Would I have gotten away with it for that long? Or would I have had to spend more money upgrading the axle just to be able to handle the 37s? You know, there are so many reasons here I could go on all day. Another one that comes to mind is that because you're adding rotational mass to the wheels and tires, you need to upgrade the brakes on your vehicle. That's not cheap either, so you can just add that to more money you need to spend. Next reason, is if your tires stick outside your guards, you're gonna be throwing mud on your own vehicle. 
And that looks cool in a photo shoot, but let me tell you, when you live out of a vehicle for months or years, if the side of it's covered in mud, it's really painful to live out of. Every time you lean up against it, you get covered in mud, and that's frustrating when it's actually your life. So keeping your tires inside the guards is something that I consider really important for a vehicle I'm gonna live out of. And actually, an even better reason to keep them inside the guards is because in a lot of countries, it's seriously illegal to have them wider than the guards. You know, in a lot of countries in Central and South America, you're probably not gonna get put off the road, but what you are gonna have to deal with is corrupt officials who try and bribe you to get money because of your illegal vehicle. You know, maybe you'll talk your way around it, but with tires that just look like a monster truck, these guys are gonna be more inclined to flag you down and pull you over and give you a hard time. Do you wanna spend your time in Nicaragua dealing with these guys who wanna get money because you have big tires? Or do you wanna spend your time in Nicaragua on the beach? I know how I wanna spend my time. And with the tires that I've always had on my vehicles, never once has an official tried to give me a hard time about them being oversized. Definitely something to think about and potentially one of the reasons that I've always had a pretty easy time. Even though I've had hundreds of bribery attempts, Nothing bad has ever happened and I've never really felt in danger because my vehicle looks more stock and blends in better. And finally, and maybe the most important reason, is because tire availability becomes a real problem. Once you leave North America, 35 and 37 inch tires are going to be really hard to locate. Maybe if you go to the biggest dealer in the capital city, maybe they'll be able to special order you some, but they will be two or three times the price that they are in America. Keep that in mind, you could easily spend $800 per tire if you need to replace one. Same story in Africa, outside of South Africa, you simply won't be able to buy tires that big. So if you damage a sidewall and need to replace one, that's going to be a real problem. Whereas if you run tires that are closer to stock size, they're much more available and you'll be able to get them all around the world. When you're on a long-term international trip, these are the kinds of things you need to think about. It's different than just off-roading in your local four-wheel drive park when you're maybe an hour away from a Napa or a tire dealer. We're talking about getting remote. We're talking about getting away from the developed world. And so things are different. So I'm reducing reliability, I'm adding weight, and I'm spending more money to get an extra two inches of ground clearance. So after all of that, you can see there are a lot of reasons not to run such large tires if you're heading off on a big expedition. And like I said, in the hundreds, maybe even thousands of people that I've bumped into driving around the world, anyone in a relatively normal size four wheel drive, I've never met a single person running 35 or 37 inch tires. There's obviously a reason for that. And so if you're thinking about going on an extended trip, Think long and hard before you spend all of that money on an upgrade like big tires. My advice to you is put that money in a savings account and you'll be well on the way to the savings you need so you can go and hit the road. Tire choice is so big, I had to break this video into two parts. So stay tuned for the next video where we talk about tire choice. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. It does help my channel and stick around for more videos teaching you what you need to know to get out on your own grand overland adventure.